Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I want to show you in this particular video a, a really simple but super effective technique to create additional filtering and uh, dimension, like dimensions to filter by in your particular reports. Now, with Power BI, there's a number of different places that you can add different dimensions, okay? And when I say different dimensions, what I mean is that you have your Power BI model. Um, this one is not set up <laughs> actually in a way that I would gener generally like, you know, as I, I described many times, I like a waterfall type model, but this is obviously being changed by Microsoft, which really annoys me, but this is how they, this is how they um, have created the, <laughs> created the tools um, for us is sometimes they, I'm sure you've actually had this as well, it's really annoying when these particular, um, they, they move your model uh, around. Uh, super, super annoying how they do that. But anyway, basically what I'm, I'm just quickly making this up as I go, um, we wanna create like a waterfall. We have our lookup tables up the top and we have our fact tables down the bottom, okay? So I just quickly just revised it and I recommend you doing that if, if something like this happens to you as well. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna add different tables that I can filter by. So you remember, you know, all of these relationships are generally one to many, right? One to many. And what we want to do is we want to create filters from up here, um, from our columns, from our dimensions, and have them flow down to and have them flow down to our fact tables down the bottom. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to create some new dimensions. Now we can we can create some of these inside of the query editor right but sometimes it doesn't make sense like sometimes there's an a, there's a lot of additional logic that you might need to um to create that does it just cannot be created inside of of the query editor the query editor is great for simple things like um like this where we can you utilize some great features um to add additional columns in our data sets so um Actually, this isn't going to let me do it. But what I could do is I could come up here and I could add column and I could do column from examples. I could create a custom column. I could do a conditional column. Okay, so some, this is what, the ways that you can add columns very quickly inside of the query editor. But what I want to do is show you how you can actually do it inside of here using virtual groups. But before I do that, I want to show you how you can also use formula to create additional dimensions, right? So this this original table we had in our products, in our products, uh, in our products table, right, only had two columns. But what I wanted to work out was, okay, well, let's group these products up. And so I created uh, an initial calculation of sales. Then I um, created an, uh, well, I created some groups based on those sales. So these are hard coded, right? So this is actual logic that I've hard coded so that I've been able to group my my products. So this is one, another way you can, this is uh, us creating another dimension, okay? so. This is another way that you can do it. There, there are some downsides to this, one being that this is not dynamic. So um, we have literally hard-coded numbers inside of here. And so this not being dynamic may not be that relevant, right? Like, especially if you're looking over certain time frames, you know, a, a customer might have done, a, a product might have sold really well like five years ago, but has sold really poorly in the last year, but this isn't going to show that, okay? So that is one downside. That's where you want to use more dynamic grouping techniques. This is more static grouping. Okay, but this is this is the the additional way that I want to show you you can you can consolidate and create new dimensions quite effectively um, inside of the um, uh, inside of Power BI Desktop and inside this particular area. Okay, so what I'm going to do is on products here, I'm going to select the ellipsis and I'm going to find uh, group. So um, no, that's not going to do it for me. Ah, so you actually have to do the ellipsis on the product name, sorry. So if I click on product name, I can go new group. So you actually got to do it on the column that you want to actually aggregate up. So I'm going to go new group. And within here, I can then create these groups like um, quickly and in a, in, a, in, a, in a dynamic way. Okay, so this obviously is a demo data set. But what might happen is you'll have a data set which has a lot of values and you might want to aggregate these up in some way by creating a new dimension. And so what I can call, I'm going to call this as um, product, product categories maybe. 
Okay, so maybe product categories doesn't exist in your particular data set. But I know that these particular products are in one category and I'm going to select them. I just I was just holding down control and I'm gonna say, okay, this is the um, uh, this is the wholesale, wholesale category or something like that. Okay. These are in the wholesale category. Then I can come through here and I can select um, a few more. I'm just gonna hold down uh, shift or control just to select a group of them and obviously you know this um, will make a lot more sense on data that you're actually operating it and remember that I, I use this really extensively I had a I had a, a, a lookup table that was 500 um, no it was more than 500 it was um, like close to 1000 unique values right and so that was going to be no use to me in some sort of um, table right and some sort of visualization a thousand values is not going to produce an insight so what I wanted to do was I wanted to really roll these up into a different calculation or or create a different dimension that we could aggregate up at okay and so I didn't need to go and create a new table or anything what I could do is I could just create this virtual grouping very quickly inside of here okay and so maybe this could be the export category something like that okay then I'm going to create one last one here as an example. I'm going to group this and I'm going to call this the um, local local category. Okay. So what I've done is I've quickly created three distinct categories or, or groups here. And then the rest that I don't want to put in anything. Um, I just want to be sort of a dynamic other group. I can click on this and I can say other group here. Now why this is important is that because products are added later on, or, out, or, or, or new new items are added later on, you want to make sure they actually go into a category that you can see, right? Maybe maybe you want to actually make this other category just um, stand alone so that when something actually goes in here, you, you realize, okay, I've got to come back here and I've got to allocate it to a specific group. Okay, so then I can go okay. And then I can um, see that this particular grouping, this dimension has been placed inside of my particular report. And now very quickly, and this is just an example um, piece of analysis on, on, on some marketing data, I can actually use this dimension here. So I'm going to um, come here and grab product categories like so. And you'll see that these categories now are part of my model. And I can come in here and grab a um, particular data point that I've pre-calculated. And then all of a sudden I have a new visualization, which is rolled up at a different um, a hierarchy basically it's not at like every single product which would look silly compared to what I've now created which is a group grouping system which didn't exist in my model earlier okay it didn't it didn't actually exist in my raw tables okay so if I just like by contrast show you what this looks like by having all of these products like obviously that's you know it's not as, it's just not as compelling in, in, in a lot of cases is this because there's just too many data points. Maybe you want to show it as like this, but again, there's just there's just a lot of data points when um, you know, you can you, you can roll them up in a category like this. Remember, this can also be used as a filtering mechanism as well because it's again part of your core model. Okay, you can always go in and um, update these. So I could come back here and I could click on the ellipsis and go edit groups. And I can always come in and update them. So maybe I want to actually um, I want to actually group some of these these ones now. I can just select them and then select what I want to put them in. Select local category. So I was just holding down control while I was doing that. And then I go group. And then those ones will then go into that group. I can then do the same here. Maybe I want to add these to the wholesale category. Oh, I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't push group, sorry. Maybe I want to put these ones in here, right? I'll just go group like so, and then now things will change up based on those um, new additions that I've made, those changes I've made, right? What's also cool though, is you can actually create groups on groups here. So what I can do here is I can come into the ellipsis on product category, and maybe I wanna go another new group, and this is this is actually what I did, um, and I'm gonna call this product category, um, product category roll up or something just some sort of some sort of additional one this is what I did I took the thousand values that I had I, I brought them down into a more concise grouping and then I actually grouped them again to create visualizations where I could start from really um, broad and then I could really drill down into um, layer upon layer and I was just really adding to my model adding to the adding to the insights that I could create okay so then I can create so maybe I want 
um, I want these three to all be one group. Roll up um, main 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 categories, something like that. Main categories there, and then I'm going to put these ones into other categories. Okay, and then I'll I'll, I'll add another. Actually, I don't need another another group here because I know that that will always go into other categories. Okay, and then you'll see here that another dimension is created. I was able to create another dimension, which I can again use inside here. So power gallery roll up. And now I can create visuals that just look easier on the eye, right? Easier on the consumer's eye, easier for them to navigate around. So I can say, okay, well, I only care about these main categories. I can click on that. That will then create filters. I've, maybe we need to change the way that these interact. So I'll just change these quickly. So now I can drill into those categories, see that all filtered, or I can go to the other one and I can see how that filters and, and drill in that way. Okay. So hopefully you enjoyed that one. Um, I gave you a few, few examples there, but I really like this feature. I really like it. I've been using it for years um, and I just want to example all of the various different ways that you can use it. So hopefully you can see how that could apply to what you're doing right now inside of Power BI. Okay, let's round things off. Um, this particular example is a good one. Um, th this, this particular showcase is actually on the Enterprise DNA Showcase if you want to have a look at it. It's all about marketing campaign analysis. I just thought it was a good one to work through for this particular example, but, um, but definitely check out the Enterprise DNA Showcase if you want to explore this a little bit more and, uh, and many other examples. Okay, take care everyone. Until next time, see ya. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.